question 36 kendore so from here to question 47 in your revision kit is on your risk management right both exchange rate and risk management questions so before we go to this case study right this is an exchange rate question and also we are going to do multilateral netting so let's see here what are the requirements says a advise kendori on and recommend on Recommend an appropriate hedging strategy for US dollar cash flow. It is due to receive or pay in three months. So here they didn't say whether it's a receipt or a payment. It could be a receipt or a pay. We'll check that out. What is it? Right? So we have to hedge this US dollar cash receipt or payment in three months from LACMA company. Show all relevant calculations to support in given calculation 12 marks. B. Calculate using a tabular format transaction uh, transaction matrix. The impact of undertaking multilateral netting by Kendry and its three subsidiary companies for cash flows due in three months. Briefly discuss. Okay, so this is one one requirement. This is another one. So in one requirement, under one requirement, you can get many different requirements. They are sub requirements. First, you have to calculate. You have to use a tabular format. They have told you also which formula to use, right? For multilateral netting. And multilateral netting is we have to use a tabular format, right? Briefly discuss. And the second one is briefly discuss why some governments allow companies to undertake multilateral netting while others do not. You need to discuss this part as well after calculation. Don't forget. Right? For that, we have 10 marks. And finally, C. When examining different currency options and their risk factors, it was noticed that a long call option had a high gamma value. Long call option had a high gamma value what is long call option what is high what is gamma what is high gamma value means you should know all this to answer this question right explain the possible characteristics of a long call option with a high gamma value so you need to explain and for that explanation is three marks right before i show you the marking scheme we'll try to solve the question right first we'll go through the case study Okay, so Kendra is a large multinational company based in UK with a number of subsidiary companies around the world. Where it is based? It is based in UK. It's very important because that decides its currency. That means pound. Sterling pound is the currency. Currently, foreign exchange export as a result of the transactions between Kenduri and its subsidiary companies. It's not just one to one. It has many subsidiaries, right? Kenduri is dealing with many subsidiary companies worldwide. So, subsidiary companies matched by each company individually. Kenduri, okay? Kendrick company is considering whether or not to manage the foreign exchange using multilateral netting from UK with the sterling pound as the base currency. If so, the base currency is pound. If multilateral netting is undertaken, spot mid rates would be used. They have told which rates to use. It's very important which rates you use because you are given two, three different rates. And if you get confused in the rates, your answers will be wrong. Your amount will become wrong. So if your amount becomes wrong in multilateral netting, what happens? The amount which you have to hedge using other uh, derivatives will also be wrong. So you have to be very, very careful in the mid rates, which rate you are using. Clearly, they have mentioned use spot mid rate. Now, the following cash flows are due in three months between country and three of its subsidies. So this is for three months. Three months. The subsidy companies are LACMA based in US, Jaya based in Canada and Gochiso company based in Japan. So the currency is given. Okay. You are dealing with three currencies dollar us dollar okay cad and the japanese yen right the canadian dollar the cad so here you have been given on the left side you see owed by and owed to owed by right this are the company who has to pay to the company on the right side, right? So the paying company is the one on the left side. This is the first column. This is the second column. The first column is the company which is owing to. That means they are the paying company. They have to pay to company two, right? Let's say in the first one, Kendrick company owed to Lakma company. That means Kendrick company has to pay Lakma company how much? 4.5 us dollar million right 
so that's how you have to read it like that and you, you as you go down you can see it has been in different currencies some is in cash some is in us dollar some is in japanese yen so you need to have to keep all this in one currency you need to change right exchange rate is also given now you see why they have told that you have to use the mid rate spot mid rate because they've been given three currencies you don't know which one you have to use whether the buying asking price or the bid price but here it's clear you have to use the mid price the mid rate you have been given the three month forward and the spot rate for the three. Now, you have been given the options also. And we have been given some borrowing rate. That means we have to use it. Clearly, I can see that you have to use forward. You have to use options. You have to use money market. Right? So, currency options available to Kendry. Contract size is very important. Pound 62,500. 62, it is in pounds. Okay? Remember that. Exercise price has been given as US dollar per one pound. Premium cents per one pound okay call option put options will decide to exercise price has been given which one so it is assumed that the option contracts expire at the end of the relevant month okay annual interest rates available to canary and subsidiaries you have been given the borrowing rate and investing rate when you practice questions and all you will know that the this kind of information is given the borrowing rate and investing rate when you have to use money market hedging right so this includes money market hedging Once you do keep doing questions, you, you will come across that the risk management questions are the easiest questions out of the syllabus. Easiest questions because they are very standard. They have a fixed format. They have been, they repeat, they are repetitively asked in that way, that manner. Like for example, to, to calculate option, it will be calculated in the same way only. The only thing is numbers will change. That's it. Same way options will be calculated. Same way money market will be calculated. So there's one for, particular format. Once you know how to calculate, you will be able to do any questions under risk management. That is one biggest advantage. Right? So now let's see. And this are, by the way, you have to be very careful. There are annual rates. And we, what are our uh, hedging period? It's only three months. So when you use money market hedging, please don't forget to convert this into three months rate. This is annual interest rate. Right? Now. And we know that first we have to hedge, right? We have to recommend how uh, an appropriate hedging strategy. That means we have to use all the hedging strategies and recommend them one, which one is the best. We have to give them the calculation also, right? So how are we going to do it? Right? First, the first question let's again read the requirements so this is the thing when I, when we went through the case study now we forget what the requirement asked so it's better to read the requirements again right the requirement says i just can you recommend an appropriate hedging strategy for us dollar cash flows it is due to receive a pay three months from like my company so you know which one to hedge right so let's go to here and see what are the only you have to see the transactions between kenduri and lakme that's it so if I see, okay, I will uh, name this as uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, okay? So when I say A, you should be able to know which transaction I'm talking about. You have to take into account A because it is Kenduri and Lakme. B, you can ignore C, you can ignore D, E, F, G, you can ignore. So only the transactions we are taking is this one and this one. The first and the last one because it has Kenduri and Lakme in that, right? But here you have to net it off first. We are not going to hedge 4.5 US dollar million separately and then 2.1. One is a payment, one is a receipt. First we have to remember always internal hedging comes first before going to external hedging. Right? So first we have to see that. Kenduri uh, owed by Kenduri to Lagme. So first one is a payment. We are seeing from the Whose point of view? Kenduri. Kenduri is the company. This is a payment. Because Kenduri is paying to like me. The second, the last one, if you see, it's a receipt, okay, to Kenduri. Kenduri is going to receive. So it's a receipt. So, so you have to, the difference will be the net payment or a receipt. It will be a net payment because payment is greater than receipt. Exactly the same thing they have done here. Just check. Part A, all the transactions between Kendry and Legme are relevant. That you should know. 
because they have clearly told okay don't try to go and do that table again most of you when you see this line of long question so many subsidiaries automatically you start calculating uh, doing that table and all that table and all is asked in the second requirement not in the first requirement first requirement you already have to take the transactions between kenduri and lakma that's it because they clearly told you have to head the transaction between kenduri and lakma company so the payment is 4.5 receipt is 2.1 net payment is 2.4 the difference now let's go using forward because forward is the easiest method so i always start with the forward right you can start in any order there is no such that you have to start with forward all the time or money and then option no you can even start with options first money or whatever ultimately you have to do all the three you have to be comfortable in all the three so you do the three in any order it's absolutely fine but you should know how to do right so the hedging options are forward money market and currency options first we are going to do forward without looking the answer okay first we'll see what it is it's a net payment okay so let's go to the forward we don't want uh, we don't see when we are looking for forward don't go and see the information in the options and the money market we don't need those when we are working on forward only use the information which is relevant for forward right so kandiru is in pounds lakma is in dollar out of this three you tell me which one are we taking the first one the second okay one two three which rate should we use the first one second one third one obviously it is the first one because us and pounds the second one we don't want so the first one we have to go by this three month forward and they told clearly it's a mid rate so the mid rate will be this plus this divide by 2 you will get the mid rate right you will get the mid rate you have to divide it by that amount you have to divide that 2.4 million by that amount because the net payment is 2.4 we'll see just see here okay 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 i'm i'm sorry guys that's uh, the mid rate you don't have to use for the forward the mid rate you only have to use here to 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 uh, translate this amount when you use that multilateral netting okay here they have clearly told sorry see i have made this mistake you don't do this make this mistake in the exam this is the mistake where you can go wrong okay if multilateral netting is undertaken spot mid rate would be used see this way read it carefully i just thought that we have to use matrix no 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 so 3 month forward okay so now you tell me 1.5996 or 1.636037 now you saw the answer so you will be saying 1.5996 you have to know the reason behind that that's how you learn just knowing just because you saw the answer is 1.5996 and you say okay it's 5.996 you are not questioning it you don't know how it came it will not work in the long term in your exam if you apply this way of learning or this strategy that you saw the answer and so they you are taking 1.5996 you have to know how it came okay so this is a dollar right it's a payment okay just check this the way it is this means us dollar equal to One pound. So I have always told you that whenever you have to take the price, the two price, which one to select? Just check the right side currency, the base currency. What is the base currency? Base currency is pound. So in the bank, when you deal, you can only deal with pounds. You you either buy pounds or you sell pounds to the bank. So here we are, it's a net payment. Okay, so it's a net payment of how much? Dollar. so when you have it's a net payment means you have to buy dollar right whenever it's a payment foreign payment you have to buy that currency right you have to buy dollar you have to buy dollar means what you have to buy dollar means what buying dollar you are selling pounds okay because you can only deal with pounds in the bank because your base currency is pound here so you are buying sorry you are, yes you are buying dollar means you are selling pounds right you buying dollar because because dollar payment okay buying dollar because dollar payment but in the bank see the currency only pounds take the opposite of it buying dollar means you are 
selling you are selling pounds to bank so you are selling pounds to bank means i have told you that when you take the rate it's not what you do it's what the bank is doing you have to see from the bank's point of view to select a rate the bank is buying from you or the bank is selling to you you are selling the pounds to bank that means the bank is buying pounds from you let me write that also bank is buying right selling means bank is buying pounds from kenduri so bank is buying pounds mean what which rate this rate the lower rate always because bank will always buy at a lower rate and sell at a higher rate of course they have to make a profit right otherwise how will bank make profit so this method this way of uh, choosing the rate if you apply in any question you can never go wrong trust me because this is the method till date i follow i used to follow this method and i have never went wrong you will never go wrong with this method to to uh, select a rate right so buying pounds so you have to take 1.5996 and whether to divide or multiply this is also there is a way okay so this is us okay i will write it here again okay this is us dollar do us dollar equal to 1 pound and what is your net payment net payment is is also in us dollar that is 4 uh, 2.4 million right you have to find this right take the same currency in the in the same column right dollar for dollar pound for pound so now this rate what is this rate it is 1.5996 we know right so you have to divide same currency i told you always divide if it was different currency then you have to multiply so 2.415996 you will get in pounds that's how you are going to get in pounds because that this is also in pounds this 1.5966 and 2.4 million is also in uh, sorry not in pounds in dollar and this one is also in us dollar so you can divide same currency always divide different currency multiply so that's what they have done here here they didn't give you the breakdown why they divide how they choose the rate they directly they gave you the rate so that's why i took time to explain you that right as selling pounds for dollar receive at a lower rate if you read this sentence in like this selling pounds for dollar receive at a lower rate you might get confused so it is better to see that way right so that's why it is 2.4 million that's why see uh, another thing i want to tell you here is this is 2.4 million right so when you do the working here most of you would do like this 2.4 million divided by 1.5996 so when you put in your calculator let me also put now you what you will do is you will only put 2.4 divided by 1.5996 so you are getting something as 1.5003750094 right then you will put something like 1.555 and your answer will be totally wrong and okay but if you convert the answer into million right that 1.500 something and multiply it by six zeros then your answer will be correct right but what happens is at the end you forget to convert that into millions right you convert to forget that in millions so don't do this mistake okay don't put yourself at a risk you might forget later you will forget later so don't take a chance of remembering at the end that i will convert to millions and all from here itself when you calculate please take all the zeros take it as full amount don't put 2.4 million divided by this put 2400000 right five zeros are there and then divide it by 1.596 automatically you will get the answer in your calculator this is the most safe way of doing it right second money market hedge money market hedge what do you have to do hmm money market hedge what do you have to do just check let's go to money market position okay this is a foreign payment us dollar payment 
US dollars a foreign currency, right? Foreign payment. What do you have to do? When is a foreign payment? I have told you this when I was teaching money market hedging. If you haven't seen my video, then please do see that video, right? Money market hedging. What did I told? Uh, what did I teach? I told you that in money market hedging, when it's a foreign payment, what you have to do? When it's a foreign receipt, what you have to do? In which rate we have? What is the borrowing rate and which currency to invest? Which currency to borrow at? So here, when you see the borrowing rate and the investing rate, forget about Canada, forget about Japan. We only need UK and US. But which, in which country uh, are we borrowing and which, you know, what is the investing rate? There are four rates given. Two borrowing rates, one for UK and one for US, and two investing rate, one for UK and one for US. So you have to invest in home currency. You have to invest in home currency that is in pounds. What is a home currency? It is in pounds only. And you have to borrow in US dollar because it's a payment. You have to pay. So you have to borrow in US dollar. That means 4.8% you are borrowing and investing at what rate? UK 2.8%. Because this is a foreign payment. Foreign payment, you invest in home currency, you borrow in foreign currency. But this rate also you cannot take as it is. I told you annual rate, take for three months. Now we'll see what that is it like that. Are we borrowing? Right? We need to see. Oh um it's a foreign payment. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. It's uh, the other way around, okay. You have to you have to borrow in pounds and you have to invest in a dollar 3.1 percent and four percent invest in foreign currency that is in dollar when it's a foreign payment so that's what they have done invest in us dollar in us is a foreign payment right what is our okay so what is this starting point how do you start money market hedging check the currency what is there with you which in which currency you are hedging you are hedging dollar us dollar right us dollar you are starting with us dollar you, you don't know the amount of pounds now so when you start with us dollar you should know whether you are investing or you are borrowing in this case we know that we are investing so we are going to use the investing rate for US dollar, 2.4 million. Investing rate is 3.1%. This we have to take for months, three months, right? That's why if you see this, you will be confused. What is this 3.1 and all? This is nothing but the way of showing this. Okay. 3 over 2 multiply by 3.1 percent add the whole thing with one at the end okay so why they have divided this by four is because when you divide 3 by 12 okay i will show here forget about that one forget about this one you anyway have to add that one but i'm just showing you this part how it came so when you divide three okay this is four so 1 multiply by 3, 1 percent divide by 4. So 3.1 percent is 0 0.031 divided by 4. Hence, and this you add with 1. That's why this is like this. 1 plus 0 0.031 divided by 4. Right? You are dividing 3.1 percent multiply by 3 over 12. You can take as it is, like this also. Like this also, it will not be wrong. Here they have taken more simplified version. Right? Divide by 4 into 3 over 12 or divide by 4 is the same answer only because 3 over 12 if you simplify if you simplify 3 over 12 it will be 1 over 4 only right they are not showing that multiply by 1 so like divide by 4 is the same thing so you are getting this and once you get this dollar you need to convert it using the spot using the spot remember 
no news forward this is we are in money market hedging and please put sub heading which you are using this is forward this is money market hedge so money market hedge we have to use spot which rate to use in spot we'll go there right from spot we have to go we have to choose this rate only just check here we have used this rate right in forward here also we have to use the same rate only it cannot be one point uh, rate on this side on the forward market and in the spot market the rate will be this side it cannot be like that it will be same only like this or like this if you use this rate it will be this rate it will, if you use this rate it will be this rate it, it works in that way in that order right so that you don't have to do that long way if you want how we got that spot that rate you can do all this method how we have done for for forward still you will get the same way only because ultimately it's a dollar payment we are buying dollar selling pounds buying so all this the steps will be repeated again so no use of repeating it it will be same only which will be time saving for you right only the first time you should know how to pick that rate. second time you will be able to know which rate so you divide that by rate and you are getting in pounds this again needs to be borrowed right you will be borrowing in pounds so this need to be multiplied by this rate again borrowing rate was four percent but that four percent was annually you are taking for 12 so four percent into three over 12 right so 4% divided by 4. That's why it is 0 0.04 divided by 4 plus 1. And you are getting this in pounds. So the forward, if you compare your forward and the money, which one is giving you a lower payment? Of course, the forward. That's why they are saying forward market is cheaper and therefore it is preferred. Right? Because this is a net, net payment. Whenever it's a net payment, you will be looking for what cheaper the lower payment when it comes for receipt you are looking for a higher receipt so always don't see for the lower one see whether it's a payment or a receipt if it's a payment you will go for the lower amount if it's a receipt you will go for the higher amount this is a net payment you will see this is 1.509 1 million 1 509 and this is 1 million 500 something so of course forward is less right it the, and it will be preferred but we didn't go for the options yet right and one thing is you, know, you might be thinking that why this is multiplication here right because this is because this is in pounds this is also in pounds this rate four percent is in pounds only right it's the same rate just check here just check here this is in uk so that's in pounds so the rate is in pounds the currency is in pounds you can multiply right you are not converting here you are borrowing at that this rate so don't get confused that i told same currency uh, divide okay this is not currency this thing this portion is not currency that you don't have to divide this is a rate right when you have the same currency and the same country's rate you multiply that's how you get the rate okay now let's go to options okay so options before options here we have to use both the exercise price whenever you are given two exercise price and they don't tell you clearly which exercise price to use you have to use both under both you have to show the outcome you have to use both and don't worry more than two they will not give you if more than two you don't have to calculate right don't think that they will give you three exercise price four exercise price and you have to calculate all for the maximum is two if they clearly tell you then it will only be one exercise price but you will never have to calculate uh, the option outcome under three exercise price right it is only one or two in this case it is two because they didn't tell you which exercise price if they tell let's say they give you five exercise price or three exercise price and they tell you which exercise price to use they will tell you like that if they give more than two but if they just give you two and they don't tell which exercise price to use you have to use both that's the catch right and you have to decide three month or six month expiry which one call or put option this you have to decide first right so let's see the contract size to decide that look at the contract size the contract size this is in which currency pounds you have to make a net payment that means you have to make a dollar payment 
you have to for making that payment you have to buy dollar you have to buy dollar means you have to sell pounds you are selling pounds mean what selling pounds mean what put options put option you have to go for the put option you are selling pounds whenever you sell it's a put whenever you buy a currency it's a call option 3 month or 6 month it is 3 month expiry because this is the closest right even a hedging period is 6 month option price option uh, duration is 3 month so this is the most closest you can take 6 month also it's not wrong to take 6 month but this is the closest one right what happens is if you take 3 month expiry it it exactly it exactly hedges your 3 uh, month period right you will not be left with any basis risk if you take the 6 month expiry you will have some basis risk it will not fully hedge the position right because a hedging period is 3 month so you have to go with the one which is the closest now we are going to go for put option 3 month expiry so this is your exercise price 1.6 and 1.62 and your premium you have to calculate it is cents per 1 pound that means 2.08 divided by 100 3.1 42 divided by 100 that will be your premium right so now kendri would buy sterling put options see this is you have to write this you have to write this line compulsory you have to write this line which option you are taking you are getting one mark or two mark for, just for stating this line i will show you the marking scheme later but you need to write it please don't avoid right don't neglect don't ignore the value of writing sentences we put so much focus on calculation 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 and we don't think about writing but no here you will get marks for it clearly write which option you are using kendri would buy sterling put option not just put option not just put option sterling put option this is the word how you got it's sterling or not here look at the contract size it's in pounds and mind you one thing if you have read your uh, textbook properly you will know that in exchange traded options you will never have a dollar option never you will have a dollar option there is no dollar option you you deal with the foreign currencies you either buy or sell in that currency but you cannot buy you cannot go for a dollar call option or dollar put option there is no such option right we only have other currencies but not dollar yes if it is an over the counter option otc options where the option is according to your own preference and choice and all not exchange traded option there you can have dollar options we in fact even solved one question where we came across dollar options right in over otc but this is exchange traded options here you will come across dollar options so it's easy that it's a sterling put options to protect against a depreciating pounds right depreciating pounds write this line you need to write it why are we buying the sterling put option to protect against a depreciating pound right i will explain you how right because most of you might be confused still we will not be able to clearly get it right whether is depreciating pounds appreciating pounds or which currency is appreciating which currency is depreciating how is going to affect our position right this i will explain you after i finish this whole finish all the questions right so we'll keep this part till the end let's go to the exercise price in 1.6 and 1.62 so it's a payment right this is in dollar 1.6 2.4 is also in sick a uh, dollar just check they have put the whole amount don't put 2.4 million you will get wrong answer so that's why it's divided by 1.6 you are getting in pounds 1.5 and this 1.5 again needs to be divided by 62 500 because contract size one contract right so how many total contract you have to find the number of contracts very important again in options in even in futures also 
right we don't have here futures we are just calculating options but under futures and options you have to calculate number of contract okay very important you are getting marks for it everything is based on the contract which you are getting so 24 contracts right if you are lucky enough you will get the exact contract size the whole number as a whole number like in this case but if right most of the time you see you are getting in fractions 24.1 or 25 4.8 something like that that time you have to round down you have to round it down 24.8 means 24 contracts 24.1 means also 24 contracts it's like that so don't forget about it okay that time you are not hedging it properly so there that issue will come over hedging under hedging you have to use forward to hedge the remaining portion but here since it is a 24 contract right so will not come across that situation perfectly it will hedge now premium okay and this is for three months okay so premium how much we are going to calculate we saw that it was 2.08 this is how they have got this because it is uh, 2.08 divided always it will be divided by 100 because cents per pound right so it is the same as 0 0.0208 multiplied by 24 because 24 contracts and contract size is 64500 you are getting premium remember one thing don't go and add this premium okay don't go and add this premium with this amount please don't do this it's wrong check the currency please check the currency this is in dollar and this is in pounds you cannot add dollar and pounds you need to convert this premium to pounds before you add it so first you have to convert you are going to convert this using what rate using what rate exercise price no you have to use spot rate why because premium irrespective of whether you exercise the option or not premium you have to pay initially when you take the option that time itself you have to pay the premium so you are always using spot rate to convert the premium right so we are using this rate which rate go to spot 1.5938 it's a payment dollar payment right so you are dividing this and you are getting pounds then you can add the premium because this is a payment this is also a payment you need to add the premium with the payment so that it increases your total payment and remember one thing what is the catch here is always your answer has to be in pounds can you see here it's in pounds can you see here it is in pounds can you see here it is in pounds your answer will always be in your home currency that's how you compare under forward money options futures right this is the point check whether your final answer is in in one single currency or not it cannot be in different different currencies you cannot compare if it is you need to convert in one currency and check all and it has to be your home currency Ho your home kenduri is in which currency uk so it has to be in pounds in options now you see option most expensive is the option total payment one point one five one nine so it sees that forward is the cheapest out of all right but let's not be too quick we have the second exercise price also this exercise price was the same way we are taking but the exercise price will change 1.62 here i have told you this is the issue here we are going to have an issue now why is that because we are not having exact contract like in the first scenario we are having in fractions so i told you always round down not up not 24 contract no why will you pay 24 contract for 23.7 you will not go for more contract because you have to pay a premium remember that so we don't want to pay unnecessary premium we'll go for the less 23 round down okay so 23 contracts this also be multiplied by 62500 and again to get in to get in what in pounds we need the payment right we need the payment in pounds and now we have to calculate the premium so premium 23 and premium we saw it was 3.42 
so if you divide by 100 you will get this amount and then 62 and you are getting this again in dollar this needs to be converted again using the same rate only same spot rate you are getting in pounds right so since it's in fraction this time and and we are taking it's it's very clear that this is an under hedged not over hedged because it is 23.7 contract but we are taking 23.7 is less right we are taking less contract that means we are hedging less in the where we are not hedging that full 2.4 million we are hedging less than that in under options the remaining portion we need to hedge using forward so if you see unhedged amount you need to find out that unhedged amount the amount which is not hedged in the option how will you find out what is the total amount which you have to hedge okay i will use a different color so that you don't get confused okay i will use purple here just check just check this is the whole uh, total amount always you have to do this method to find that unhedged amount so total hedging amount is 2.4 million you have to hedge this okay but the total amount how much you are hedging using this contract 23 contract hmm? this payment which you are getting this payment okay needs to be multiplied by 1.62 this is 1.62 is the exercise price exercise price why you are multiplying by 1.62 again why not just 2.4 million minus 1437 how can you minus this is in pounds this is in dollar you need to convert this back to dollar back to dollar to deduct it from 2.4 million 2.4 million is in dollars right so back to if you have to convert back to dollar you have to use the exercise price under options so that's why you are multiplying this 1437500 by 1.62 and you are deducting that amount by 2.4 million so this amount is not being hedged in options this amount is under hedged this needs to be hedged in forward so 71250 divided by 1.5996 this is what rate forward rate please don't go and use op spot rate over there please don't do the silly silly mistakes this little little mistakes can you know can throw away your most valuable marks please don't do this you have to divide it by using forward to convert into pounds and finally you are adding this payment this this pound payment okay this premium and this using in the forward the amount which you are going to hedge in forward add all this is your total payment even using this exercise price even though it's less than uh, the first exercise price which is 1519 still it is expensive compared to bunny and forward now you are going to write your sentences and then comes your conclusion right both option hedges are worse than using forward or money as a result of the premium payable for the options why is it expensive because highly premium right however options have an advantage over forward see whenever you have to compare option forward future money market whatever swap you should always be ready with at least two advantages and two disadvantages at least two advantage or two disadvantage to talk about or oh, even one okay forget about two at least one you should know of each okay advantage and disadvantage of each method of each hedging tools you should know for you to evaluate you will get a question on evaluation you need to compare the hedging tools so that means you should know the advantages and disadvantages at least one so that you can compare right because one disadvantage of option is premium but the other advantage of premium is here sorry option is option have over advantage over forward and money market is price are not fixed and buyer can let the option lapse if ex exchange rate moves favorably so they can take the advantage of exchange rate movement if exchange rate moves in their favor they can take the advantage of that under option why how they will not exercise the option they have that option but not in forward and uh, money market it's fixed fixed rate they can hedge themselves against exchange rate if it goes uh, unfavorably but if the exchange rate goes favor uh, favorably then money market and forward cannot take advantage of that but option can take that advantage 
so therefore so you have to evaluate all this and then you have to say which one is better therefore the options have a limited downside but an unlimited upside they can take unlimited gain but when they fall down that loss that risk is limited okay the maximum they can lose is their premium that's it in options only with options can can do they take advantage of the dollar weakening against pound that means pound is appreciating right earlier we saw that we have to protect we are taking this put option because we want to protect the pound from depreciating but if the pound appreciates dollar weaken means pound appreciates right can do they can take advantage in option now let's see how the conclusion is this is how you have to write your answer conclusion and see the conclusion also two sentences in three lines only two sentences conclusion has to be very short you are not describing uh, you know line by line by line and all it should not be so lengthy please work forward is prefer to money choice between option and forward will depend on whether management wants to risk for higher cost for the potential upside if exchange rate moves in can do this favor see how they are giving the option the 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 conclusion they are not saying clear cut that use option use forward therefore they have to use forward because forward is the best you cannot say like that because option also has its advantage so when you write the conclusion you have to write words like this right the choice between this two will depend on the management of the company how they want whether they want to prefer the lowest cost or they want to take advantage of the options and all those things you need to talk in your conclusion okay i will make a video also separate how to write conclusions and what are the words needs to be written okay so now let's see i have told you that i'm going to explain you this how pound depreciating is going to affect right why to protect against pound depreciating pound and how do you know that is a depreciating pound and all okay so this is uh, what is it dollar payment okay i always do this little exercise we have seen by before videos when i was explaining this you must have seen that i have done this but again it's okay i'm repeating it right why am i not able to write okay, I mean. okay okay so let's say okay before 1 pound was equal to 1 dollar okay always work with small number it's easy it's time saving to work and you don't have so much of headache you don't have to use your calculator and all don't try to work in uh, hundreds and all okay now 1 pound is equal to okay before it was 2 before it was 2 now it is 1 okay if you see this okay before 1 pound was 2 dollar now 1 pound is equal to 1 dollar what is happening is pound is appreciating sorry pound is depreciating okay you can see from 2 to 1 it's falling down so pound depreciates pound depreciates means dollar appreciates okay and this is a foreign receipt uh, sorry foreign payment okay so foreign payment that 2.4 million you need to know how much it cost in terms of your uh, pound right so before 2.4 million would be in pounds okay 2.4 divide by 2 so before in pounds it will be 1.2 million now since it's 1 is equal to 1 so it will be 2.4 million pounds 2.4 million dollar is 2.4 million pounds so you see which one is more expensive 1.2 or 2.4 the second was in, is expensive it is getting expensive so as pound depreciates the value of pound falls down from 2 to 1 we have clearly saw payment will become expensive this is a payment payment will become expensive therefore they are saying that you are buying sterling put options to protect against the depreciating pounds depreciating pounds pound is depreciating if it goes more down more than 1 cost will keep increasing payment right so payment it will keep increasing right so this is how you see just do the small working and see 
what's happening to pound what's happening to dollar which is depreciating which is becoming worse and also it will be very easy for you to write depreciating pounds and all i also always used to do this in my exam on the site one side i used to do this small working it will not take two minutes right so now we are done with this now we are going to use the second one second one is a little easier it's just multilateral uh, dating and we have to use the table so 10 marks right so now to use that we have to use a mid rate mid rate means uh, we are forget about the three month forward when you go to the spot right let me let me okay oh no okay okay uh okay so let's go to this okay or this table first we are going to write as it is kenduri lakme all those things that we are going to write this amount and then we are going to convert this amount to only one currency which currency pound everything is going to be converted in uk pounds sterling pound they have told that that is the base currency and we are going to use the spot mid rate right you add the two mid rate uh, spot rate the bid price and the asking price like you add this and this this oh. okay you add this and this and divide by two that's it sorry not this not the forward i mean the spot for all the three right we are going to use this okay so we'll see how it is so mid rate they have calculated it right you can calculate and see whether you are getting this three rates or not and you should be able to get it so here you are paying subsidiary will be on the horizontal axis and you are receiving subsidiary on the vertical axis so this is your receipt it will be downwards and across will be your paying subsidiary you have to add your total receipt you have to add your total payment right when you add your receipt please add across like it will be 1316.6 plus 2165.6 you are getting 3482.2 likewise for the other three also and when you add payment you are adding it downwards like this 2821.3 plus 700.6 you are getting 3521.9 so like that wise you have to add like this add downwards and get payment and deduct your payment from receipt and you are getting net payment or receipt if it's a net payment it's in bracket if it's a net receipt without bracket okay so all the amounts you are converting right and i hope you will be able to convert but still i will show one let's see for the first one and whatever is in pounds uh, sorry i'm going to the marking scheme and whatever is in pounds please leave it in pounds only let's see let's say for this one right and we don't have any amount left in pounds so everything needs to be converted right let's say for the first one 4.5 for this 4.5 we are using this rate mid rate from this us dollar per pounds okay second one 1.1 we are using this we are using this this okay for all the cat we are using the first one and then okay so likewise you will know how to calculate and get all this table okay once you get all this table okay one thing before you do please make sure that you are arithmetically correct right you need to be arithmetically correct how will you know that add all your payments this one and this one and this one add all your payments and check whether it is equal to your receipt or not it has to be equal to 912.912.3 uh, your payment has to be equal to your receipt if it's not then you are arithmetically wrong somewhere right that is the only way of checking right so i have added up and i got 912.3 you also check so that you know that you are arithmetically correct okay so now it's done now how will you write all this this you need to write just doing calculation is not enough this three lines has to be there who is paying to whom now it is reduced down to three transactions only what is it what is it 
Who is having a payment? Whoever has the amount in bracket, they are the one they have to pay to the one who is receiving. Who is receiving in this case? US is receiving. US means who is US? Who is in US? Lacoma. Lacoma is in US. Lacoma. So everyone from UK, from Canada, from Japan, we are paying to whom? To Lacoma. So who is based in UK? The first transactions we are taking 39.7. That means it is 39,700. This has to be there if you are working, removing the three zeros. Please make sure. And if you are working, if you, are, if you want to write all the zeros, then this should not be there. If you are writing all the zeros, but if you, are, if you want to eliminate the three zeros and don't want to write all the three zeros, please write this here. But when you write your final answer, it has to be like this. You are not writing 39.7. Okay, write the full amount. So who is making a payment to whom? Here, UK. Who is based in UK? Kenduri, K. So K is paying to L. Kenduri will make a payment of 39,700 pounds to Lakma. Everything will be in pounds to Lakma. Right? You are not saying the country. You will say the company's name. You are not saying UK will pay to US. You are paying, you are saying Kenduri will pay to Lakma. Second transaction is this one 367.2. And it is in Canada. Who is in Canada? Check the table from the question and see it is J. Jaya. So J. So Jaya will pay to Lakma that much. And finally, the last one is in Japan. Who is in Japan? G. Gochi Show. So Gochi Show is paying a payment of. To Lakma. Okay, so that's how you have to write these three sentences. Whoever is making a payment, whoever is having a bracket, is making a payment to the one who is having a receipt. So multilateral netting works like this only. Right? And it's very easy. There is no nothing else. This is only a way of working out multilateral netting. Now, one more question they asked. Don't forget about that. Why government allow some companies to multilateral netting and some not? So this is the answer. You can even memorize this answer also. Right? We'll read it. So multilateral netting will minimize the number of transactions taking place through the banks of each country. Exactly. Rather than, uh, you know, setting each uh, payment, receipt, payment, receipt, or netting. First, you are netting against each other. And then just see only three transactions. It reduced the transactions to only three. Whereas if you go by this table, which table? I'm talking about this table. If you see. Just see how many are there. Eight. Eight transactions. Kendri has to pay Lakma again. Lakma is paying Kendri again. Kendri is paying Jayas. Eight transactions has been reduced to three transactions now because of multilateral netting. It, and it's cheaper also that way. Right? So multilateral netting will minimize the number of transactions taking place with the banks of each country. This limits the amount paid in fees to these banks. Of course, when you make a payment to banks, you have to pay fees to bank, but this will be reduced. Governments which do not allow multilateral netting are therefore looking to maximize the transaction and fees that the local banks will receive. See, if the government does not allow multilateral netting. Why is that? Because they want their bank. How will the bank get fees if everyone does multilateral netting? Therefore, they restrict so that banks, okay, there will be an increase in banks fee and the transaction. Other countries may choose to allow multilateral netting in the belief that this makes them more attractive to multinational companies and the lost banking fees are more com more than compensated for by the extra business bought to the country. Right? Self-explanatory. I don't have to explain anything new in that. So they are saying the loss which is there from the banking fee. Right? That is compensated because we are having more benefit from the multilateral netting by bringing extra business to the country now let's go to part c part c they are saying about gamma what does long call option means and what is high gamma value means okay and it's for three marks okay so gamma measures the rate of change of the delta of an option this you should know please you don't have to know too much of gamma just this one single line you have to know about gamma if gamma is given right Mostly it is delta which is given, delta heading. 
but in case if gamma is given so you should know this only one line that gamma measures the rate of change of delta so we saw that delta changes because of the other five variables what happens when delta itself changes that is known as gamma okay deltas can be near zero for a long call option which is deep out of the money see whenever it is near zero means it is out of the money only okay delta can be near zero for a long call option which is deep out of the money where the price of the option will be okay when it is near zero or out of the money the price of the option will be insensitive to change in the price of the underlying asset deltas can also be near one for a long call option which is deep in the money one means in the money where the price of the option and the value of the underlying asset more mostly in line with each other okay so when a long call option this is from your theory from your textbook itself okay when a long call option is at the money so when it's in the money one out of the money zero at the money 0 0.5 the delta value right when a long call option is at the money delta is 0 0.5 refer your textbook but also changes rapidly okay also changes rapidly now they will talk about gamma therefore the highest gamma value see it's in bold okay that means this line has to be there therefore the highest gamma values are when a call option is at the money why highest gamma value highest gamma value means that is the point where delta can change very highly very rapidly so when a delta changes rapidly gamma also will change rapidly gamma value will be high right and it happens when it's at the money call option is at the money therefore see it changes rapidly right at 0 0.5 therefore they are saying highest gamma values are when a call option is at the money gamma values are also higher when the option is close to expiry okay see when option is close to expiry value can change very rapidly that in that case also gamma can be higher in this case it appears that the option is trading near at the money and that is it has relatively short period before expiry okay so all these are from the textbook and now we'll go and see the marking scheme that's it we are done with this question but marking scheme is very important right so marking scheme we'll see how the first one is marked calculation of net us dollar amount one mark just check for that 2.4 million internal hedging for that itself you are getting one mark if you are trying to hedge two one payment one receipt from kenduri to lakma you will lose that mark because you have to hedge net whenever there's a payment and receipt to the same country net it out first then hedge calculation of forward market so forward is one market money market is two market is two points i'm sorry option you see option is the most mark okay calculation of one put option amount 1.6 or 1.62 three marks how three marks one for 1.62 1.14 the other one is for stating that it's a put option three marks second calculation of the second put option amount or if the preferred excess price exercise price is explained preferred exercise price which of the two okay next advice and recommendation three to four marks is in the advice and recommendation only first we advise then you recommend or a conclusion so you cannot miss marks on this part b right construction of the transaction matrix one mark please follow that table matrix uh, transaction matrix that tabular format has to be there if you don't follow if you just even if your answer is right you will lose one mark because they have clearly told you transaction matrix even if they don't tell you just think practically how can you solve that so many countries are receiving payment right is it it easy for you to make a table and then solve it right so you're losing marks over there even if they don't tell you you have to make this table because when we study multilateral netting we saw that we have to make a table and that's how we do multilateral netting calculation of pound equal 11 amount to us dollar converting you are the amount which is given all the amount you are converting to pounds for that you are getting four marks calculation of the net receipt or payment net receipt or payment this is this one i'm sorry this one let's just see this 
one, two for net payment and net receipt. Sorry, uh, net payment and net receipt. This one, we are getting marks for this. So don't throw away this valuable marks. Okay, explanation of the garment reaction to hedging, three marks, three marks. And finally, the last one about gamma, three marks. So one mark per valid point. So that's it for the marking same as. And I hope that this shall make your exchange rate uh, hedging easier for you to understand. If you have liked this video, please put likes, that thumbs up, and show me that you value my content, you love me, you love my work, and you want more of this work in the future as well. And do share this video with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you, and take care.